all remember the show Laughing? For some of you who are maybe um, old enough to remember that show, I used to watch it on Nick at Night as a kid. I belong on Laughing with this dress. <laughs> I look like I belong on Laughing. Good morning, artists. Well, it's morning for me right now. Welcome back to the channel. I'm Jane. I'm here to guide you in the fine arts and fun arts or whatever you want to call it. So today we're going to kind of do a little bit of a unique challenge, I suppose. So I'm also super excited to reveal a f scratch art becoming fine art, basically. That is the challenge. This is the end result. <laughs> and I really have a lot to say about this product. But also, it was more about, you don't think about scratch art as being fine art. That's not the first thing that comes to your head. I found that the process was relaxing, so I kind of basically think about this in a way that's a little bit like coloring books where it's simultaneous with art and wellness. It's something that's satisfying, it's relaxing. You don't really have to stress out about it. And I found that entire process to be true through the whole way, except for whenever my hands would cramp. Even though I had these little tools that they came with, and I'll show you, they have a flat end, just like almost like a pencil, and then there's the sort of curved angle end, and th there's four of these in this pack. So the four pack of these are included there. You can see it's kind of a angled edge, as I like to call it. And then the other one is just simply pointed. But I actually ended up sharpening the pointed end with a fruit peeler. <laughs> It will never peel fruit again, <laughs> probably, because I use this thing a lot during this process. So thank you so much, fruit peeler. So I wanted to use all kinds of different things just to test out like what kind of results they were. What I found the most useful is a set of small screwdrivers. I only use three of them, but a set of screwdrivers from Dollar Tree. Now there's flat ones and then there's sort of the Phillips end and I ended up using more of the flat end and I would hold it flat for broader lines and then I would actually use the corner kind of like this upright. You can't see it, but I'll have an overlay. So you'll have like just the very corner and that really helped carve out some of the more finer details in the main and especially on this particular area and some of the, mostly overall, I ended up using these little guys. And you'll get to see that. And I just found them to be so useful. And how funny is it? I mean, and it's freaking from the Dollar Tree. You know, that's what I love about the Dollar Tree is that you can find stuff that you can use in art that's not common. I wanted to try and use sandpaper and I didn't get around to it. I just used basically a flat brush to brush off some of the excess black throughout the whole process so I wouldn't smear it. The whole idea behind this is that we don't think of scratch paper as fine art. We don't think of it as a specific art supply. We think of it, we kind of associate it with fun, kid stuff, you know, and that's not necessarily true. You can utilize things to make them into pieces of artwork. It doesn't matter what it is. You can, you can use pen and a napkin, you know, as you all know, I'm sure you have done that at restaurants before. So anything can be art, treat it as art, you know, and then you'll make it as art. That's really the whole idea behind this. And so I really like this. I mean, this was a fun little process. And this actually got me, it, it, it brushed up on my shading techniques because you had to use the negative space in order to create the effect that you wanted. And so I find it interesting how I use different tools to create different effects in the fur and how it basically became what it was, if that makes sense. I wanted to make sure that I was utilizing the tools for specific fur and how the texture is with fur and how it, the patterns sort of on the bridge of the nose especially are very fine detailed and they have a pattern. They kind of go up and over the bridge of the nose and come back down. And then of course, you know, you have uh, the mouth, and that has a little bit more, more length to it. You have your mane, which is a little bit more on the frizzy side. <laughs> so I had to use kind of irregular small strokes for those particular effects that I wanted. And as I continued, I realized that I was kind of getting lost in the details and obsessed with the details. 
So I kind of backed off and took a break and looked at everything and realized that I was needing more of the whiskers to stand out and some of the more prominent areas where the light was, was backlit and hitting the main and I scratched more off basically. The company did send me this for review. I'm not sponsored by Artisan and I know, I know I review a lot of Artisan products but they're so generous and I'm like, hello free art supplies, let's figure this out. I feel like it's a great value for the money as well. You know, you get 42 sheets. Um, sometimes you'll find some of those scratch paper for like five packs for 10 bucks. I mean, it's just ridiculous. And I believe on their website, I believe this is about $20. I have to double check. And on Amazon, you want to check the price as well because they have deals on Amazon as well. these little postcards. There's four of them in there. I have not used them yet, but look, there's the opposite side you can use for your name. You can color this in and then you can scratch your little artwork on there. I thought that was really, really cute. I love the little extras that they throw in sometimes. So there you have it. I mean, you get a great value for the money if you want some fun. I think this would be great if you're not really feeling like getting into the process of getting all your art supplies out and making a mess and, you know, I, I love getting messy, don't get me wrong, I do, but I think that there's, a you know, sometimes whenever you're just not in the mood to really like make a mess and maybe you want to just Go to your friend's house, spend some time with them, and you know, watch some Game of Thrones and make some scratch art, you know. And so. <laughs> So sometimes you gotta loosen up and have fun with art and not be so focused on the end result and technical skills and whatnot. You know, that's something that I really find is an interesting balance on my artistic journey is to be able to brush up on my skills, improve my skills, because I am the forever student. Really, we all are. I'm not a master, but I'm pretty damn good at what I do. <laughs> So I take pride in some of the mediums that I use and it's always come to me very intuitively. But between that technical balance and being able to get into the flow and just loosen up and have some fun, that's whenever these two kind of meet together in this little medium here with these little pieces of paper. You can have both worlds basically. So are they archival? That's a, that's a con because I'm not really sure if they are. You know, I mean, there's... You know, I'm sure if you stuck this in the window, some of these colors might fade over time. So I wouldn't put these in direct sunlight under glass, but you could put them under glass and use them. I think that would be fantastic. So you could also use this with your kids. It's very easy to join in on them and get them to, you know, get off the video games and have fun there. So that's, that's always an option as well. I think that's great. You know, you can use this for fun. You can use this for fine art as well. 
And I'm also, just to mention real quick, I'm really enjoying the watercolor sketchbooks that they sent me. I'm just starting to use them, but, and this is the Daniel Smith mixing set. Holy Lord, so beautiful and vibrant. I'm working on a, a gouache piece. And then I've got this all sketched out. This is my Jungle Jane. I'm gonna use her in another video for a watercolor tutorial or some tips or something like that. I haven't really planned it all out, so. I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope that you subscribe if you are new to the channel. Blah, 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 blah. You know, I'm not going to go into a bunch of hoo-ha about that. But I do love creating for you all. It's been a little bit of a challenge to create consistency. It's, <laughs> it's been a little bit of a challenge to get everything consistent in syncing it up with my you know, my schedule, but I do try to create content for you that you enjoy, entertain, and I can inform you with. So how are you all doing? Leave a comment in the comment section. What do you think of this art paper? Would you purchase it yourself? Would you use it for fine art or would you use it for just fun and scratching off designs or whatever? 
Thank you for joining me today. Thank you for watching. And as always, keep creating. So these come with the actual... Okay. Okay. <laughs> Using my words today. <laughs> Keep creating, keep your day job. To make sure that the tools that I would, I would, bleh, bleh, <sighs> take a break. I'm wearing it, so <laughs> I like it. It's fun, it's fun. Look. <laughs> so, and so this is the end result. Yay! You're gonna have an overlay, so you won't, you know, you won't. This is really bright. <laughs> And some of them have, you know, the alphabet. Some of them have some of these little unique color, unique. <laughs> Hopefully, I am in focus. So I will have a cucumber, uh, a cucumber. Um, hmm.